Okay, in this lesson, what we are going to be looking at is solving quadratic equations by factoring. In the previous section, we looked at the factored form of a quadratic function, and in this one, we are going to be looking at how to solve quadratic equations. Now, the premise of this particular section uh, is the following statement. If a times b is equal to 0, so if the product of two values, or, or yeah, two values is equal to 0, then one of them, Either a has to equal 0, or b has to equal 0, <clears throat> Okay, because something times 0 is always equal to 0. So if a times b is equal to 0, then one of them must be 0. As we get into this section, here's something to think about. So given the premise above, that if two <clears throat> terms or expressions equal 0, that one of the expressions must equal 0 itself, what must be true for each of the equations in factored form? then solve each equation. So here's kind of the idea. If we have x minus 8 times x plus 2 equaling 0, then either one of the following two statements must be true. Or either x minus 8 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 is equal to 0. And then in order to solve this, you just use algebra uh, or any other method that you would like to. So in this particular equation here, in order for x minus 8 to equal 0, x would have to equal positive 8. Or if you'd like to use the algebra, you would add 8 to each side because you want to solve for x. So it's x is equal to 0 plus 8, which is 8. And in the second statement, in order for x plus 2 to equal 0, x would have to be negative 2 because negative 2 plus 2 equals 0. Or to figure that out, you could just use algebra. The opposite of adding 2 is subtracting 2. So it would be x is equal to negative 2. So there are your solutions. Uh, in the next question, it's virtually the same thing. Here are my two expressions. So if x times 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, then either of these two things must be true. Either the expression x equals 0 or the expression 2x minus 3 equals 0. So in the first one, for the expression x equals 0, x would have to equal 0. There's no solving for x. It's already isolated. And in order for 2x minus 3 to equal 0, you could solve for x. So add 3 to both sides. We'd have 2x is equal to 3. And then divide by 2 in order to solve for x. So it would be x is equal to 3 halves. And those are your two solutions for x. So that's kind of the goal of this section, is to solve for x. So part b solving quadratic equations in factored form. <clears throat> so here's how we do this. Solving quadratic equations in factored form is the same as determining the x-intercepts of the function in factored form. I'll show you that in a little bit. <clears throat> so if the quadratic equation is not in factored form, what you must do is, first of all, make one side equal 0. That's the first step. Uh, the second step is factor completely. And that is kind of the key idea of this section, is how do we remember how to factor. <clears throat> and th third step is going to be set each factor equal to 0 and solve. And the fourth step is, if necessary, you are going to check your solution or solutions. Okay, So there's lots of different solving quadratic equation type of problems here. So let's look at the first one. <clears throat> Method number one is factoring expressions of the form ax squared plus bx plus c when a is equal to 1. So what you'll notice about this highlighted in yellow equation is that it doesn't look like it's in factored form. What we just did previously was if we have factored form, then we set each factor, because one of these factors or expressions has to equal 0, and then solve. So in other words, if we have factored form, these questions are much more easy to solve for x. So what we're going to have to do is remember how to factor, because we already have one side equaling 0. We're going to have to know how to, or recall, how to factor x squared plus 8x plus 12. 
and I would suggest using either the box or area method. So we know that two terms have to multiply to be x squared, another two terms have to multiply to be 12, and the diagonals have to add to be 8x. Uh, if you forget how to factor, you may want to take some time on this. So here is these two terms multiply to be x squared. x times x is x squared. Uh, let me show you an incorrect method of factoring. If I had this being plus 3 and plus 4, they do multiply. So 4 times 3 is 12, but this term here would be 3x because 3 times x is 3x. You just look to the left and up and multiply them. And this term here would be 4 times x, which is 4x. And the problem with this example is that 3x plus 4x do not make 8x. So that is an incorrect factoring method. <clears throat> As you practice this, you'll get better at it. Uh, the two factors are actually plus 2 and plus 6, because this term here would be 6x and this would be 2x. And those, 6x plus 2x, do make 8x. So the first step is the factoring. So your factors would be x plus 2, as you can see on the top of this square, and x plus 6, as you can see on the side of this square, and it's equal 0. And now what you'll notice is that this looks very similar to what we've already done. Okay, We have factored form, and now we can just say that each of those expressions has to equal 0, or one of them has to equal 0. So <clears throat> either x plus 2 is equal to 0, so either that factor is equal to 0, or x plus 6 is equal to 0. So what value would x have to be in order for x plus 2 to be 0? And that would be negative 2. You could also solve for x by using opposite operations. So this would be x is equal to negative 2. And also, if we subtract 6 and solve for x, we'd have x is equal to negative 6. Now, what it mentions here in the key ideas is, as we just as we get before into the last problem here, is that solving quadratic equations in factored form is the same as determining the x-intercepts. Because what you'll notice is that x-intercepts are also called zeros. So if I was to graph <clears throat> this function here, x squared plus 8x plus 12, so I'll just show you. So here's y is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 12. If I graph that, you'll notice that I have x-intercepts of negative 2 right here, and negative 6. So the solutions uh, to this equation are equivalent to the x-intercepts because they are also the zeros. Let's do one more problem. Uh, the issue with the second problem <clears throat> is that it does not equal 0. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make it equal 0. <clears throat> so we have x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals 0. Second step is you are going to want to factor x squared minus 7x minus 8. If you use the area method, I can show you the factors. x times x is x squared. And we should in this case have a minus 8 and a plus 1. And the reason for that is that this term here would be plus 1x, this term here would be minus 8x, and those two terms, 1x minus 8x equals negative 7, as well as negative 8 times positive 1 is negative 8, as you can see here. So your factors would be uh, x minus 8 times x plus 1 equals 0. So either one of these two cases, x minus 8 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. So if you add 8 to solve for x, you'd have x is equal to 8 as one of your solutions. And if you subtract 1, you'd have x is equal to negative 1 as another solution. So if you're in my class, you may want to practice solving two problems by doing the following questions and having me look at it.